Good Saturday evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Rochelle Pitt. We've got a lot to talk about in the Atlantic tropics right now. We're not quite to that peak hurricane season date quite yet, but it's looking a lot like it when you take a look at the big map. Now, talking about your tropical headlines, Ida became the fourth Atlantic hurricane in 2021 uh, on Friday afternoon. And right now, Ida is going through rapid intensification. We are going to be probably seeing the strongest storm we've seen yet in the Atlantic with Ida over the next 24 or so hours before making landfall. And as mentioned, multiple other areas to keep an eye on in the Atlantic. So here's that 5 p.m. advisory on Hurricane Ida. Winds at 105 miles an hour. So close to becoming a Category 3 hurricane, but it's not just the winds that we're going to be worried about with Ida. It's the heavy rain, the severe weather threat, and then also the storm surge threat in parts of southern Louisiana. Now, thankfully, Ida is not moving too slowly. It's moving right now to the north and west at 16 miles an hour. Pressure now down to 976 millibars. The lower the millibars, the lower the pressure, the stronger the storm. So we're going to be seeing some lower numbers coming out of Ida as we go again through the next day or so before it makes landfall. And taking a look here at the satellite imagery, you can see that counterclockwise flow. Ida looking pretty healthy as far as the storm goes. And you can also see in these last few frames that eye really starting to clear out with Ida. As far as rapid intensification goes, it's when we see a system uh, strengthen at least 30 knots, which is about 34 and a half miles an hour within a 24 hour period. And we have seen that with Ida with the 5 a.m. advisory on Friday morning, 45 mile an hour winds. And then as we went to Friday afternoon, 5 p.m., just 12 hours later, up to 80 mile an hour winds. And this storm is not done strengthening yet. It stayed pretty steady as we moved through the overnight Friday into Saturday. And then we started to see a little bit more strengthening with Ida. And of course, that 5 p.m. advisory now up to 105 miles an hour. So here's a look at Ida where it is. It's really just in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico right now, 240 miles south southeast of the mouth of the Mississippi River and 325 miles to the southeast of Huma in Louisiana. So taking a look at the track here, of course, and intensifying even more so that Sunday by 2 p.m. we could be talking about a category four hurricane making landfall in Louisiana. You see no other states included in this cone and remember that the cone only shows where the center of the storm is going to be moving. It doesn't show the full swath of the storm, how wide the storm is going to be, because it's definitely going to be affecting our neighbors in Texas, neighbors in uh, Alabama, Mississippi as well. All of these areas, even Florida, parts of Western Florida, most likely feeling some impacts from Ida. Of course, the worst of the impacts are going to be closer to the center of the storm and then also on the right side or on the east side of the storm. So we're talking about areas around New Orleans, those areas toward Mobile and also towards Biloxi, Mississippi, possibly seeing some of the worst of the impacts of Hurricane Ida. The storm is going to quickly weaken as it moves over land, losing touch with the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, and then it's going to hook over to the east. So keeping an eye on the mid Atlantic toward the middle to end part of next week, we're talking Wednesday into Thursday. Some of those areas could be talking about some tropical downpours uh, from whatever is left over of Ida. Looks like it's going to be gobbled up by a front that's moving off to the east. So some of those areas not getting the direct the worst impacts, but getting some of those residual impacts from whatever is left of that circulation from Ida. Let's take you back down to Louisiana into Mississippi, Alabama, and even into Florida as well. You do see this purple area. That's a hurricane warning anywhere in the orange into northern parts of Louisiana, central parts of Mississippi, even southern parts of Mississippi and extreme southern parts of Alabama, all under a tropical storm warning. And we also have tropical storm watches currently in place for the waters off of parts of the Florida panhandle. So a lot of areas included in this. And when we take a look at some of the storm surge alerts right now, we have storm surge warning from south central parts of Louisiana through areas south of Baton Rouge, New Orleans included, Biloxi, Mississippi, and then towards Mobile, Alabama, all included in storm surge warnings. As far as how much storm surge we could see from uh, Ida, you do see again really centralized into southeastern parts of Louisiana. Zooming in, we've got the legend here toward the top of your screen. You see uh, Interstate 12 right here, also Interstate 10 as well. Some of these numbers, you're seeing the reds and the oranges, that's up to 10 feet, possibly upwards of 15 feet of storm surge flooding in some of these areas is possible 
during this time that Ida is moving through. Let's take you back to the infrared satellite and what this is, it's showing you where the cloud tops are. The colder the cloud tops, you see more of those black colors, some of those white colors as well. That's indicating colder cloud tops, which means higher thunderstorms, taller thunderstorms, more thunderstorm activity. And you can see again, as mentioned just a little while ago, that I really becoming defined. You're seeing some of those greens and those reds surrounded by those blacks and those whites. That's the eye really clearing out in the center of the circulation of this storm. Switching over to water vapor imagery with this, we would look for anything that's more of a tan or a brown color. Not much in the way as far as dry air to kind of inhibit Ida from strengthening. So not much uh, and not much to deter Ida from strengthening as it moves over the Gulf of Mexico. Wind shear also not an issue with this. I've showed you where some unfavorable areas of wind shear are going to be, and that's all going to be to the east of Ida over parts of Florida and even into parts of Mississippi and Alabama. But we're watching Ida moving just away from those areas of wind shear. So if it would shift just a little bit off to the east, maybe we could see a little bit of some slowing of the strengthening of the storm, but that is not going to be the case. Another thing that's going to add to the strengthening, as I mentioned, very, very warm waters over the Gulf of Mexico in the line of where Ida is expected to move. You do see 85s, mid 80s, and these storms only need water temperatures of at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit to sustain their strength or to strengthen even more. And Ida is going to continue to eat up these absolutely hot waters as it heads closer to parts of southern Louisiana. You're seeing some of these waters more into that 87, 88, 89, near 90 degree water. So Ida has really not much in the way for it to continue this rapid intensification before making landfall in southern Louisiana. So Ida, of course, we mentioned on track to make landfall as a category four hurricane in Louisiana sometime, I think Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening time frame. So far this season, the strongest storm that we've seen in the Atlantic Basin has been Hurricane Grace. Now that maxed out with sustained winds of 125 miles an hour, a Cat 3 hurricane. Now probability of 75 mile an hour winds or more, we do see 100% into this area just to the south and west of New Orleans. And we're seeing pretty high probabilities as we head toward the Baton Rouge area as well. But of course, we know that storm is going to be moving toward that area as a major category four hurricane. But we talked about the storm surge, 10, 15 feet, also going to be an issue as well as the threat for severe weather. We could be talking about a tornado outbreak in that area, especially again on the eastern side of the center of the storm. We'll be keeping an eye out for that as well. Now let's talk about rainfall on top of the winds, on top of the storm surge, on top of the severe weather threat. We're talking about some areas in southern Louisiana, 10 or more inches, 10, 12 inches. We're talking about feet worth of rain moving into this area. And as you see going up to the north and to the east, that does lower just a bit. But as we head towards Jackson, Mississippi, still five and a half inches of rain, Memphis, Tennessee, nearly six inches of rain. So we're not just going to be seeing those effects in those areas in that direct line of that major hurricane status that Ida will have on Sunday. So you do see the heaviest of the rain down towards southern Louisiana, but we're still getting lots and lots of rain through Mississippi, through western parts of Alabama, good portion of Tennessee and even into Kentucky as well, seeing very, very heavy rains. Now let's talk about the I name storm, very notorious letter for the Atlantic hurricane uh, season, Atlantic hurricane tropical area. So these are all the I named storms that we've seen uh, on record uh, over the past few years. And when we take a look, we're going to switch things over to the retired names since 2000. See if we can go back or not. The retired names since 2000, we've seen quite a few of those for the I named systems here. So you're seeing uh, uh, Iris, Isabel, Ivan, Ike, Igor, Irene, Ingrid, and Irma. So those are some of the names that a lot of you probably remember. Uh, no matter where you live, these storms got quite a bit of coverage and for good reason because they were very devastating enough to be retired. Now, as far as Ida goes, the last two instances that we saw this name, 2015, it was a tropical storm. Back in 2009, a category two hurricane. So Ida for 2021 could potentially be added to that retired list. So we'll see exactly 
what the uh, effects are going to be of this storm as it moves through parts of the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, we have Ida out there in the tropics, but we also have Tropical Depression 10. Invest 97L with now a high chance for tropical development in the 48 hour and also the five day outlook as well. And a tropical wave that has yet to come off of the western coast of Africa that will have a medium percent chance of becoming at least a tropical depression within the next five days. Let's talk about 97L. Let me give you a little bit of perspective for where it is geographically. You do see Trinidad and Tobago there, Venezuela, Barbados, Guadalupe, and then also Puerto Rico where San Juan is. This storm not really going to be impacting anybody. It's a fish storm. We're not watching too many effects from it, but we do think that it will become Tropical Storm Julian as we move through the next few days. But again, just going to meander in the middle of the Atlantic. Let's take you back over to Invest 97L. As mentioned, high chances for development in the next two and also the next five days in this tropical wave that will come off of the western coast of Africa. 60% chance for at least becoming a tropical depression within the next five days. So here's a look at 97L. Where could this be going? Away from land. Thankfully, it's going to curve off to the north and east and then kind of going to curve back to the north and west, kind of going around parts of eastern Canada. So not too much of an issue issue for 97L. Next few names on the list, as mentioned, we saw Tropical Depression 10, expecting that to probably become at least Tropical Storm Julian, probably not too much more than a Tropical Storm. Uh, and then we have Kate and then Larry on the list. So we are really getting through this list as we move through through August and into September, which is typically that peak month that we see tropical development. So taking a look at the trends here, uh, as far as hurricane season go, you see September 10th, that's the very notorious date, typically that peak date for hurricane season. Right now we're at August 28th, so we're on that steady climb where we typically see more and more hurricanes and tropical storms develop in the Atlantic hurricane season. And then we don't end the season until we head toward the end of November. So if you're interested, thank you so much for watching. You can follow me over on Twitter at underscore Rochelle TV. You can also find me on Facebook at Rochelle TV, no underscore. Again, if you're interested in doing that, but I do want to thank you all for trusting us with your forecast and I hope that everyone in the line of Ida is safe and we'll keep you updated as we go through the rest of the season as well with any other storms that develop uh, in the Atlantic tropics and we'll also take a look at the Pacific tropics as well. But again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to us here on the 13 News Now YouTube channel. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend.